did so is uh is Donda just not coming out? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's I think it's like the Holy Spirit. It's it's already here, it's all around it's us. It's all around us. You can't see it, but you can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel the frustration from his fans. Yeah. It's it's hitting a fever pitch. I think I don't know. I've seen I've seen a lot of people, a lot of Kanye fans come up with a whole lot of excuses. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. They are very apologetic for the guy. Yes. He can really do no wrong at this. It's funny that given everything that's happened over the past like three years, three or four years, mm -hmm. that his his biggest fans who have stuck with him through all of this have become even more, like they've become more ardent and just stuck in the yeah. ground as yeah. when it comes to having conversations about him. It, it's strange. It's It's almost like people have this cult of personality and regardless of any mistakes they make they have this ardent fan base that can't be swayed wild what a concept crazy crazy well uh i don't know have you watched any of the live stream do you have you heard any music I, from it i caught the second donda we'll call it v2 v2 yeah donda v2, donda v2. um i think i no, no, I actually saw the entire thing. I was able to roll it back. I, I caught it a little bit late streaming, but I was able to jump back on it for a bit and catch up on the rest of it. All right. Yeah. All right. So I had a full viewing. Okay. Well, I, I've i only heard the songs, like some of the leaks, and then obviously the commercials that have come out mm -hmm. that they use to advertise uh, Beats by Dre. But you have a full view of, of what he's got so far. So let's get into that. All right. But before we can do that, we, of course, have to get into these brewskis. <laughs> so, Obi, please tell the people what we're drinking tonight. We have the Sideward Brewing Tiki Sour Painkiller Style Sour. Florida Vice. Vice. Um, and unfortunately, as is so often the case, there no is no cold, cold read. read. Uh, but we do know this is a 6% ABV. I want to say, it, anybody from Sideward, if you're listening... We need a cold read. Yeah. We, you just need something there. Just uh, this is what it is. This is why we made it. Maybe a little anecdote. Something. An ABV even. An I'll a take an ABV. <laughs> we don't have an ABV on the can. You know what? I'd like to ask them their thought process behind the yeah. label and why they don't put uh, the ABV or IBU or any other information like that on it. We'll have them on maybe. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be fun. This is an open invite. Yeah. But in the meantime. I felt threatening. <laughs> <laughs> this is an open invite. Come on. In the meantime, we're going to crack these brewskis open and have ourselves a good time. This is episode 320 of the One Beer and Podcast. Oh, All over my gut. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is the One Beer In Podcast, the podcast where two brews crack open a brew and see where that one brew takes us. My name is Marco Dupa, and that guy right there is Adam Obesius Rodriguez. What is up, brewskies? Like, share, and subscribe everywhere podcasts are sold, listened to, watched, enjoyed, devoured, drank, all that jazz. Add a comment. Why not? Yeah. Have some fun. We appreciate any and all discourse just keep it nice i mean you can be mean but like be nice be nicely mean you know sure have a point have a point have a point have a point other than you're racist <laughs> <laughs> what if my point is i'm a hateful son of a you know what good, oh by the good, way good save yeah good save. very I, good save <laughs> i looked into that i was about to like really uh -huh. lean in we only have to go for like two minutes Really? Yeah, it's not like five to ten minutes. It's really just the first couple of minutes in the video. Like advertisers don't want to be associated with anything oh. negative. So I was misled. I thought it was the first ten minutes. Yeah, I just looked it up the other day because I was like, 
because I was actually getting annoyed with us, <laughs> you and I both, we just, it just, it's just part of our yeah. lexicon. So sometimes, yeah, me more than you, I think, mm-hmm. but yeah, I could not curse in the house growing up. Oh, I couldn't either, but, um, they were just gone so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. No, I mean, I mean, they were working all the time. Yeah. There was nobody for a good long time. It was, you know, we were just raising each other. Mm. You know, we were we were pseudo latchkey kids. That's good. My, uh, yeah, I, I get that. I think the difference is I had Catholicism to follow me. Mm-hmm. So oh, I, yeah. I felt if I were to say it even 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 by myself, if I were to go into a closet and say a bad word, uh, <laughs> I was about to scream one right now. Was, I know God was listening. He was up there. Like, uh-huh. He's like, go ahead. I got you. Go ahead. Yeah, say it. Go ahead. I dare you. Mm-hmm. I dare you. That's why I am the way I am. <laughs> That's deep. We're not going to unpack that today. Uh, save that shit for you, therapist. Mm. <clears throat> Are we? Okay, we're good. We're like, we're like almost 10 minutes in. We can cuss now. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Thank fuck. Anyway. Uh, Yeah. So you want to give like a a quick little, quick little rundown of that? You, you don't have to obviously go track by track or like go into super detail. Just what you think? Just an oh, just a little synopsis. I uh, yeah, I thought it it sounded great. Um, I don't know the differences between version one and version two, obviously, because yeah. I only listened to the second, the second show. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sounds really good. It sounds like a a good rebound from. You know, Jesus is King. Jesus is King, where we last left him, and it being this like complete attempt at a gospel album that, I mean, I know for both of us fell flat. Yeah. Um, it it, I'm not sure if this is going to be reflected in the actual album because who knows what's happening with that right now. But there's definitely like this grand scope to it all. It feels very grand and big. Yeah. Um, the two songs that I heard that they used. Uh, with uh, Shikari Harrison, I think her name is the uh, the track star who got in trouble for uh, smoking weed, and everybody mm-hmm. lost their fucking minds over it. Those two tracks, I thought, were really good. Yeah, really good. So I was like, oh, okay, okay, Easy might be back with this one. Yeah, and um, you know the the thing that stood out to me was the amount of features. And the the quality of features, I should say, yeah, um, really, really strong. It feels like a who's who. Oh yeah, of uh, greats <coughs> on their current it's current greats. Definitely huge list. Most excited to hear Jay Electronica. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've sung his praises on the show before, but I'm a massive Jay Electronica fan. Yeah, I've heard every. I mean, I I was I was on this guy when he was, you know, rapping to Dilla beats when he did the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, basically act one, uh, got the, got the, the leak of his, te- his debut that was on the discord. I joined the discord to get the link. Uh, uh-huh. I mean, I'm, I'm a big J Lec head. So yeah. it's fun to see him pop up every now and then. Cause he's so, he's such like a, like just, he's like Ben Kenobi in the fucking, you know, like he's mm-hmm. just in a robe somewhere not doing anything but yeah. still he comes out and it's just like oh the gr- old i was gonna say grand wizard <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not do that <laughs> definitely not that no but the old you know the old wise wizard up on the mountain he comes down and he blesses us with a verse and you're like why don't you just do this more often please, please. <laughs> we're starving <laughs> we need it um yeah speaking of that uh great jay-z feature oh yeah a lot of people i saw that blowing up yeah um so yeah, I mean, all in all, it just it it feels like we're getting a bit more of classic Kanye, um, mixed with what we seem to do uh, more recently, um, but without without the entire uh, trappings of it having to be a quote unquote gospel album. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's a mix between that. Like he's obviously still you know very religious, very spiritual, but he's also kind of let up the the reins a little bit the on preachiness of it yeah um yeah so i mean i i uh i'm definitely excited to see what the finished product is going to be if we ever get it yeah um can you imagine being one of those gospel artists or 
uh, a, a a Christian artist or whatever, and he 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 just dips his toe in and mm -hmm. he wins best gospel album, <sighs> Grammy, and it's just like. You huh <laughs> you've been trying for like 20 years yeah and he just jumps in and he's like uh i don't eat you know chick-fil-a sunday eh. and they're like genius genius <laughs> genius <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's just like i've been talking i've been singing the lord's praises for 25 years but not like this sorry you're not kanye what are you gonna do this guy was talking about bleached assholes That's right and and then a year and a half later, you know, give all glory to God, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's somebody said I don't remember who it was. Uh, it was Jack, the CEO of Twitter, actually. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, he posted something about the album, saying he should put it out the way he did the Life of Pablo, which was mm. unfinished, and then he just updated Updates it. it. Yeah. Which well, I, that, that was a that was a theory for a long time that that's how albums were going to start coming out. Yeah. Um, I don't recall anything recently that's been that way. Nothing. I don't think there's anything else that's come out and done it that way. Yeah. At least not as big. I mean, I'm sure we're missing something in that time, but I, I mean, that's an idea. I, I think that'd be cool to at least satiate the fans right now, but I don't know. I, I remember thinking the life of Pablo, uh, Hmm, should I say this out loud? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's fine. It's fine. They're not going to come after me. I'm just some lowly old nobody. Okay. I have the OG version of The Life of Pablo. Mm -hmm. The first the first version that came out. Okay. And I think it's the best version of the album. And all the stuff that he did afterward just kind of didn't do it for me. As 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 in... It didn't need it wasn't necessary. The album was good enough as it was. It just didn't need to be. And then there's other things that he didn't finish. Like 30 hours for instance. You can tell there's either supposed to be a a a three stacks verse or there's just there's just pockets in the song that just seem unfinished. Like empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's weird shit like that and then other things where he just changed some lyrics in the songs where you're like what you didn't need to go back and mess with that. Yeah. I think what I'm getting at is people will fall in love with one version of the album and then you come back and you change it. It's you're going to you're not going to split Kanye's fan base cuz that's not going to happen. But for any other artist it could be divisive. Sure. So. Yeah, and I, I think there's a tendency to latch on to what you know. Yeah. So if you're really feeling that first version and then suddenly it's no longer there, I mean Unless what comes after that is that much better. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's just different, you're going to miss that original version. Yeah. I mean, it happens in video games all the time where there will be a, a patch and suddenly your character doesn't play the same way. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, that's ruined for me now. Oh, yeah. I mean, these fucking these Battle Royale games, they update the meta all the time. Well, they update the guns and the meta changes, rather. And then sometimes it makes everything that you knew how to do right. obsolete you miss the good old days yeah uh, by the way excuse me i'm not the only one complaining about this it's a complaint all over the internet but warzone is near unplayable at this point i've seen that I've, I've seen that it's so bad yeah it's so bad uh i don't want to derail the conversation too much but just two seconds terrible mm. the aim the 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 hackers the fucking they, their their refusal to put any kind of anti cheat software there, it just seems like they've decided that we're moving on to the next game, so you guys can figure it out. But isn't Warzone supposed to be like forever? Isn't that? <laughs> yeah. So Warzone is, but once they put the newest game out, that then they'll come back and revamp ah. the battle royale afterward. Okay. So they're so, just the theory is they're just holding to shake up the entire deck. Yes. Okay. And Got it. it's it's I mean you can see like streamers have have migrated in mass mm -hmm. over to like apex and other games because Warzone's near unplayable mm -hmm. and people complain about it all the time. And it just seems like Raven's just looking down and going, no, <laughs> <laughs> like, hold, please do something about this. Yeah. Well, I mean, if enough people leave, they'll do something. We, I watched the stream for a little bit where a guy, this was actually on the Warzone subreddit, a guy got killed by a cheater, 
Mm -hmm. and he decided to spectate that cheater. That cheater got killed by a cheater who got killed (laughs) by a cheater. It happened Uh at all in a row. Interesting. I got killed by a cheater in a game, and we all we were we were playing together, so it was like three of us, and uh, we all decided to spectate him. And he mm-hmm. knew we were spectating. Obviously, he could see the number or whatever. Yeah. So he knows we're watching him. So then he's spinning, and he's just clicking people in the air. People are like coming out of uh, off parachutes, and he's just <laughs> just like knocking people. He had thirty kills, which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I just needed to get that off my chest in a public way. Feel better? Yeah, I do. Okay. Sorry, let's get back. Let's okay. get back to it. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you, though. I think that that could lead to a lot of people, uh, you know, it, it almost kind of diluting the product in a way, too. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting as far as the concept goes, but, you know, we, we've, we've seen this before, though, in a way where you'll have an album, then an album 1.5. You know, and mm-hmm. it, but in most cases, that's just adding more to it. It's yeah. not like changing what you already know. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, maybe you could try it. At this point, I have I have completely given up on. I don't pay attention to Kanye in the way that I mean. You can go back and listen to this show. I mean, I was I was a Kanye. Yeah. I wouldn't call myself a stand necessarily, but I was pretty close. I like to think that I can stay objective when it comes to music. Even my favorite artists put out dog shit sometimes. Sure. And I can be objective. Or have really bad takes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's these past couple years, all of that notwithstanding, the musical output has just kind of not really hit me. And that's what we've always talked about is like if if the thing that he does outside of his opinion on politics or, you know, dumb shit he says sometimes yeah uh, that aside if the music's really good there's something there there there's still so, a reason to come back yeah and be like okay the, the product's still good at least yeah i mean obviously there's limits to that but you know if if jesus is jesus is king was good i feel like you know there wouldn't be as much of a backlash uh, <laughs> against him right now. Or I think a feeling because, you know, you see it on Twitter all the time now where people are like, forget about it. Don't even worry about putting the album out, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like there would be less of that if Jesus is King wasn't so divisive and, yeah. and wasn't such a departure from, you know, what we and fans enjoy from him. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I, I think, again, he still has this rabid fan base. Clearly, yeah. they're not going anywhere. He can do no wrong in their eyes. Yeah. In fact, I think what he's been doing lately to them is the most right he's been in years. Mm-hmm. He just can't seem to make a mistake in some of these well, people's I, eyes. And I've, I've seen this entire Donda run um, just reaching this crescendo point now mm-hmm. where people are like, they're rabid for it. Yeah. Like they are, they are peaked. They are, they're ready to go. So when uh, I'm sure it's not even going to, there's not going to be like a fanfare for it. I have the feeling it's just going to be like, hey, it's out by the way. And then yeah. the internet is just going to implode <laughs> yeah. and like melt. And it's going to be, a, it's going to be a moment. It's going to be an entire, it's going to be like a, like a, um, a Beyonce drop. Yeah. You know, like it's just going to be one of those things that it's, it's here. Yeah. You know, Hey man. And, you know, you got to give him, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to give him credit for that. He knows, he knows how to grab people's attention, how to hold it, and how to capitalize on those things. Sure. Whether the thing comes out and you like it is a different story. The yeah. fact that he, he can get everyone to pay attention to him when he wants is something that I'm sure agents, managers, record labels all, all study his career and mm-hmm. try to figure out, like, how does he, every time he puts something out, create a moment and not just a thing like it's always a moment in the culture yeah that kanye's released something well a lot of a lot of it last time for jesus is king i don't know why i have trouble saying it jesus <laughs> is king um might have a problem with the concept entirely <laughs> but uh <laughs> calling sorry mom 
calling sorry the, adam's mom calling the therapist <laughs> um yeah uh that that was surrounded by the controversy yeah right so that that caused the buzz and, it, and he had to something similar before that so a lot of times it is him and again we talked about this before uh, is it on purpose is it him just actually talking how he feels i for the record don't believe that he says insane things to get attention for his albums i think while on a promotional run it just so happens right he's saying these things right. because the spotlight's on him right yeah it's i think it's i truly think it's a coincidence i don't think that not to say that he isn't savvy enough or smart enough to do something like that. I just don't think that that is the intent. I think he feels the way he feels about these things, and he has to spotlight them at the moment he's saying those things, and he just so happens to be putting an album out. Sure. So. Sure. My two cents on that. Anyway. Well, all that said, I am excited. Uh, am I waiting uh, for a midnight release and, and you know just hitting reload, refresh, 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 refresh? Yeah. No, I'm not. <clears throat> I did that with The Life of Pablo, and that was the last of it. I'll never do that again. I don't care that much. I don't care that much anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but I am excited to listen to the final product based on that version two that I heard because it sounds really good. Yeah. And it sounds like he's doing what he does best. Yeah. Um, so could be a return to form, but we'll see. Well, only one way to find out. We'll talk about it. Uh, I don't know. Next year, <laughs> well, when he fucking rumor has out. it he's moving to another <laughs> stadium location. Really? Yeah. To finish it and do another, I guess, show. And my thought here is maybe he's doing these shows to hear it in the element he wants it to be heard best in. Yeah. And then based off of that, going back with edits. <coughs> so he already made a stadium rap album with uh, graduation mm -hmm. so i think he i mean he already knows how to do that but i think yeah that makes sense that he would like to know how it's going to sound in these huge stadiums what what if this is just like a guerrilla tactics world tour and he just keeps going to like these major cities and doing like a new version of donda in each place honestly that would be fucking genius yeah and if that were to be the case I'd gain a little bit more respect <laughs> for him. A little respect would come back because that's a really cool idea. If that were the idea, if he just said, you know what? This is how the album is going to be uh, consumed. Mm. You have to buy tickets. It's going to be played in this in this way. Yeah. And each time I hit a city, I might change something. I might not. Mm. Maybe That's really cool. Maybe he um, he has like a, an artist from that city or area to perform yeah. in that in that venue yeah that'd be a really dope idea that would really kind of start to hone in on the possibilities of music and its creation mm -hmm. being more interactive with the fans yeah because that was kind of the idea when uh pablo came out and uh he was changing things based on audience feedback mm -hmm. that was kind of the idea was wow is now album creation going to be a, an exchange of mm -hmm. ideas as opposed to here's the product deal with it right fans could have have a say in how they wanted it to come out sure. which i think is a terrible idea yeah no. i hate that so much <laughs> no i, I hope yeah. i hope that that doesn't happen but that was something that was being floated uh when pablo was coming out and that's how he was doing it uh so that that this could be an, another way of kind of uh playing, playing with that with idea them. which i think is interesting but yeah, I'm completely on the artist side. I hate the idea of like asking the opinion of millions of people and putting any stock in that opinion. Sure. Like this is the art. Deal with it. This is this is what is coming from me. I'm not listening to your opinion on you, this. You like you like Sonic the Hedgehog's baby teeth? <laughs> you like that? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh-huh. That's a little different. Okay. That's a little different. So need to remind you because that is no, that's different. Okay. That's different because that is those that is that studio's reinterpretation of an already beloved mm. thing. If I came in and remixed 
Marvin Gaye's album, and then people were like, "How dare you?" And then what if, I'm like, "This is my art, man." What if it was, "Let's get it off"? <laughs> Did you ever think about that? Mm. I have. Here's my take. Yeah, that that is where. Yeah. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't you fucking do that. Those baby feet. I still, I still have fucking nightmares about it. It's terrible. Insane. But that knuckles. Oh, oh, we're getting knuckles, and it's gonna be Idris Elba. Fucking Idris Elba, man! It's gonna be so fun. God, I can't believe how far that franchise has come already. I gotta be honest with you, still haven't seen the original. You haven't seen it? <laughs> no. Oh my God! How have you not seen it? I, you know, nothing against James Marsden or anyone else involved, but uh. It's a good movie. It I just hasn't about been it on, on my here. list. It's a good movie. All right. It's not like an incredible movie. I I'm know. not saying it's required viewing. Okay. Better or worse than Detective Pikachu? Better than Detective Pikachu. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I liked Detective yeah, I, Pikachu. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I think Detective Pikachu is an okay movie. So. I like Detective Pikachu more than you do, I think. I didn't. I mean, I, I'm not in love with it, but I thought it was. I liked it. Yeah. I think more than you did. Maybe. I think I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. We can watch. If you really, want you need to. to. I think you need to rewatch. Yeah, not Detective Pikachu. No, that's not required. No. Okay. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I think because it's just it's so it's so fun. It's so it's it's completely predictable. It's a kids movie, but there's like some legitimately funny jokes. Mm -hmm. And I'm I already did this, <laughs> but I think it's a good movie. <laughs> anyway, fuck that. Yeah, you don't have to sell it again. Okay. We get but, it. But you don't get to watch Idris Alba be Knuckles if you haven't watched the first one. That's true. They bar you from yeah, <laughs> going they in. They ask. They punch you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nerd. <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I like the uh, the Donda cover art, by the way. I don't yeah. know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. It looks real. I, I, like yeah, cool. I like the idea behind it. I like the the concept. I like, And it just looks cool. Yep. I, like when he, I like when he tries with the cover art. Like when he like Jesus, there's I don't care what his fans have to say. It's not a good cover to just be a picture of the disc. Yeah, it's no, not no, a good no. cover. I don't I'm not good. I'm not going to argue with you about this. It's, it's not, not good. And it's not clever either. Like, no. It, and it's been done before. It's been done before. And, exactly. So it's not good. Yeah. Uh, and then the Jesus is King thing. Same thing. It was just a picture of the record. Mm -hmm. I'm like. I'm not giving you credit for that. No. It's it's minimalist, man. It's simple. You just have to enjoy the music. Okay. You think he was the first one to fucking think of that? <laughs> it's so smart, man. No, don't you get it? You don't get it. You just don't get it. Yeah. Whatever. So I like when he tries. I think that that's the difference. Mm -hmm. When there's stakes, <sighs> I think he performs his best. Sure. And I, 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 that's true of anyone, though. That's you know? true. Like, yeah. I, I, I think... Well, most people, you think. Sure, yeah. Uh, but on, at the same token, though, I feel like Jesus is king, saying it very <laughs> slowly. <laughs> I, I feel like that that confuses me then, because I feel like I I should like Jesus is king more than I do, because he was trying something different. He was going for something. I think he was trying something different. That doesn't mean he was trying his hardest I don't sure. think the stakes were as high for that album that they were for Pablo or for this album. Yeah, I, I think guess so. at that point he had already kind of alienated enough people, and it seemed like he just was like, "I'm this is this is my new path now." So read it and weep, deal with it, mm -hmm. and it and it that kind of it felt it had this rebelliousness to it. Which is ironic because he's leaning into religion and, and gospel music. But it did have a rebellious spirit that, like, everything that you expect me to do, I'm doing something different. Right. But at the same, on the same token, if you listen to it, lyrically, it's his, probably his weakest. Mm -hmm. Musically, it's incredible. I think we... I think yeah. we kind of agreed the the fact that, like, musically, it's, it's really... There's mm -hmm. some, like, really big and good moments on that album yeah but l lyrically i think yeah i think um simplistic it's it's very happy with yeah like a heavy-handed and, yeah. and uh, cheesy kind of mm -hmm. just one note yeah uh yeah 
So. Yeah, I guess that's true. I, I I think what's confusing me is that I generally <clears throat> really enjoy that in like film. I like to be challenged. I like to hmm. not get what I expect from an artist uh, and feel uncomfortable about it. I like that. Well, I think you got that. It just wasn't good. And that's 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 <laughs> what it boils down to. Uh, I'm I'm coming to this sort of realization that th- that's what it it boils down to is that despite all of those things that uh, if this were math it would line up to a perfect equation for what i i would at least appreciate yeah but it doesn't because the end result is you know second tier yeah there's something wrong with the math formula where you're like i'm not getting the result that i should be getting right it looks right these numbers it looks right yeah but it doesn't there's come out to yeah just something i i enjoy yeah so I don't know though, man. Maybe we don't enjoy it because we can't relate to it. Did you ever think of that? Sure. Did you ever think the fact that you don't go to church anymore means you there's some level of it that you don't get? And so how dare you even talk about it because you <laughs> don't relate to it. It wasn't made for me. Yeah. Okay. So you don't get to talk about it. All right. Fair enough. I'll sh- Shut the fuck. Maybe you should. Do you do you do you think that <laughs> I feel like that that kid who are do you, you do you, do you, do you have you do ever you, have you have you have <laughs> ever ever do you in the world <laughs> <laughs> Do you put any stock in that argument? That if something isn't specifically made for you that you don't have a say in how it's received yes or perceived perceived um no (laughs) i don't put stock in that well a lot of other people do okay anthony fantano has been somebody who is the needle drop not a stranger to this kind of controversy in fact he's had this conversation on the internet A hundred times before, and I feel like he's going to continue having this conversation because it's just something that uh, is never going to let up. No. But if you don't know, Anthony Fantano is a very white, very nerdy. uh, In fact, he's the Internet's busiest busiest music music nerd. nerd. And uh, he reviews music of all genres. He is, as you mentioned, the needle drop. And uh, over the past couple of years... His profile has grown exponentially. Yeah. I remember years ago when you put me on to him, he was he was popular. I mean, he was a he was a popular YouTuber, but he now has gotten to a point where he's getting nationwide media exposure. His reviews typically do, you know, Numbers. in the millions. Yeah. Uh, he's he's now a legitimate music voice in the vein of a Peter no Peter Travers does movies uh <laughs> like Robert Christo or or you know trying to think of notable music reviewers he's the only one I can pick up right now all music mm-hmm. I know that Rolling Stone has a couple of good ones but sure. anyway he's a very notable voice in uh music criticism and just music period sure he's getting like like he's, the he, interviews he does he gets like big name yeah. artists yeah he's a, he's a tastemaker yeah definitely mm-hmm. Uh, I hate tastemakers so much. I hate the idea of tastemakers. I hate the idea. I hate the concept that like fucking pitchfork has this hold over this, this, this large community of people that like they see something and go, Oh, that's enough for me to never check that album out. Cause fucking pitchfork said it. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with that fucking nerd. Tantano. <laughs> 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 and it's like, there's this large community of people who, Take everything he says as gospel. Wait, another cult of personality? Who would have thunk? Oh, my goodness. That's what we're dealing with in 2021. Right. So his latest uh, l- latest controversy in the vein of, of all of this is that he reviewed the Isaiah Rashad album. The house is burning. And he sort of liked it. Gave it, what, a six? Five. He gave it a five? I uh, That's tough, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good album. That's. 
That's a harsh review. And I will say, I I saw this entire controversy because I I still follow Fantano. I still watch a lot of his reviews for you know artists I care about, um, just to see his opinion. Because I believe he gave it a five. Yeah, yeah. So I only today though finally watched his review for it, and it's kind of kind of scathing. Yeah, <laughs> like it's way harsher than I expected it to be. Yeah. Um. So I, I, from that stance, can kind of understand why fans of Isaiah Rashad, which yeah, I, I count myself as an Isaiah Rashad fan. Um, I will, I'll say this: it it took like uh, it took a couple listens before, for me to uh, enjoy the house is burning. When I first listened to it, I was like, eh, yeah. But a couple of listens, and I was like, I was wrong. This is a good album. Yeah. Well, I, I was saying, I, I understand why fans would take that as a uh, uh, super harsh criticism yeah and then you know as you were saying re-listening to it again and uh, I, I probably listened to it by this point like three times or so um yeah i mean i think it's good i yeah. I, I it's not a five to me no it's not it's not a five out of ten that's no yeah but does that in any does his opinion in any way infringe upon mine? No, I don't care. Like I, I I like listening to his his insights onto music and his his thoughts on things because you know it's just interesting for me to have that other opinion. Yeah. On music, but him not liking something, his yucking my yum, as some would say, <laughs> in no way makes me enjoy it less like mm-hmm. I, I don't understand why i mean maybe maybe if you personally have a connection to isaiah rashad and you know that anthony fantano is a tastemaker mm-hmm. and his review can keep people from your album potentially mm-hmm. i understand why you have a beef with him you know you're like uh, your harsh review especially if you feel like it wasn't fair if you feel like he was being unnecessarily harsh and not understanding and not taking a deep enough look into what you were trying to do. Mm -hmm. I understand why you may have an issue with that because you know, at the end of the day that leads to fewer people actually listening and giving it a chance. But as far as a Joe Schmo, like you or me, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Right. Uh, Like I feel like you have to have enough confidence and uh, uh, enough, I don't know, uh, uh, enough stock in your own opinion to be able to handle other people not liking the thing that you love, maybe. Yeah, but at the same time, you are asking a lot of, especially young fans, They're the people who watch Fantano's reviews every time, like weekly or daily, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, impressionable people who would otherwise have checked out an album and then they don't because they, they believe his word. Sure. And uh, I mean, it's the same thing with any real uh, criticism or anything. If you are a person who follows Peter Travers, for instance, you may not go see a movie because he gave it a scathing review in Rolling Stone. That being said, I do agree with you that your musical taste and your opinion of your own opinion should be high enough that you go, oh, okay. I'm going to check it out anyway to see what the fuss is about or see why he didn't like it or what have you. I think the larger conversation that's revolving around this is a lot more interesting than, you know, people having weak ass opinions (laughs) and, and, and weak, you know, they don't have any fortitude in their own fucking, Mm -hmm. because that's just, that's a tale as old as time. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's a meme that Fantano himself has, has put out before. It's like, oh, well, I like this album, but then Fantano says it's not very good, so yeah. I guess I can't like it anymore. Yeah. And the idea that, like, when he puts something out and he goes, you know, this is just my opinion, right? And right. People go, yeah, but. And it's like, no, no, there is no yeah, but. He got popular. There's a lot of people watching his videos, but at the end of the day, it is just his opinion. Sure. And... Uh, I, I think though, so, okay. He puts this review out and then Isaiah Rashad, it, it comes into Isaiah Rashad's, um, uh, atmosphere, his gravity pull. Yeah. He finds it and he's like, oh, do you have what 
Isaiah Rashad said? I don't, but I can pull it up. He responded to the link. So uh, you should be able to just Or no, he didn't respond. No, he didn't respond to that. He responded to somebody asking if it was out yet. Yes, cuz I think somebody from Isaiah Rashad's camp was the first one to start making it a thing. Uh no, Isaiah Rashad said something about it and then T uh <clears throat> Top Dog from TDE. That's right. He was like, "Okay, please explain to me how you actually uh review these albums like what is your thought process behind um reviewing an album that you can't actually relate to right right so okay i'm trying to find isaiah what what he said i want to i want to get what he said first here it is i found it so Isaiah, uh, somebody asked if the album was out, and Rashad responded. He said, "It's not experiment. It's not experimental enough to excite him, basic enough to make him laugh, and too black for him to identify. My public persona isn't something to deconstruct, so he doesn't have much to review. I'm guessing it's just reviews, if anything. And uh, that started a firestorm. Yeah, for uh, Fantano and for Rashad, really." And uh, I, I, I am just so completely fascinated with this idea that um, because he's white and because he hasn't related, he can't relate to some of the things that are talked about on the album. He can't <laughs> criticize it. Yeah. Um. I. My opinion on that is that I do honestly feel like there is an argument to be made there that. There are some things that you are not, you haven't bear witness to. And so your opinion is formed by your own experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> what you're doing is laying onto that thing, your own perception of that thing. And sometimes you're just not going to be able to see it the way other people see it or, way, or the way that it should be perceived because you've put your own biases on it already. Sure. And I'll give you an example. I, for very many years, was a stuck-up rap snob. Mm -hmm. East Coast, underground, I don't want to hear anything else. All that other shit is bullshit. There's no lyrical content. There's no ability there. There's no skill. Yep. They don't have any respect for the genre. They don't know anything about the history. As we used to say, shit's trash. Shit's trash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... It took me a really long time to understand, especially being in the South, it took me a really long time to understand that there there are artists who put music out and it's solely for the people in their own lives. Sure. And you won't be able to relate to it. When people started saying like Boosie, when they started comparing Boosie to Tupac, or even more recently when they started comparing Kodak to Tupac, it would just make my brain melt. I just <laughs> yeah. couldn't wrap my head around well, it. Well, it's great for headlines, too, because they know people are going to freak out at that that don't have a perception of those but artists. But it's, it's not just headline grabby articles. Mm -hmm. It's people that I know personally who truly believe that because of how they viewed Pac and how much he affected their lives mm -hmm. and then how much these guys affect their lives and how much they connect those dots it's less aesthetically it's more impact yes and i think if you can if you can start talking about music in a way that's like okay this artist may not be the best but he's definitely the most influential then you definitely have to have some kind of merit in the idea that you're not gonna get it mm -hmm. so your review of an out saying it sucks to you it is your opinion right sure. it, uh, and that's at the end of the day, Fantano is famous for his opinion. So he's going to give his opinion, and if you don't like it, shit, that, that, I don't know what to tell you. Sure. He, he's not going to give it a positive review so that he can, like, he's not doing you a favor. He's not going to, like, he's well, not. And not only that, but they're, like, Isaiah Rashad, there's not, like, a, uh, a restriction on white people listening to that album. Right. Like, right. there's no cap on that. Like, you, you. He's allowed to listen to it and interpret it in whichever way he wants to. Yeah, exactly. But 
I'm not sitting here saying he shouldn't review it, but the idea that Top Dog floated and that Isaiah Rashad floated, which is you need to educate yourself on the black experience before you can talk about an album that is solely an album about and formed by mm. the black experience. I think that there is an argument there. I don't I I do think that there's albums that I don't like <clears throat> and I think maybe some of it has to do with the fact that like I just don't appreciate it the way somebody would appreciate it had they lived those experiences. Mm -hmm. And I I do I, like I Music criticism is such a fickle, complex thing. Criticism in general. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's like you could definitely end a conversation by just going, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. To just, who, you didn't, I think about it with my own music. Like if somebody were to give my album a bad review, I would just be like, you don't know how much time I spent mm -hmm. on this. You don't know the thought process that went into this. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're just some fucking guy. Sure. You know? They're a person with an opinion. But if you're going to shit on an album and a lot of what makes the album great to a lot of people is that it speaks to them, I mean, you're going to have to be at least ready for people to be like, well, you didn't get it, man. <sighs> sure. Sure. I, but I, I think, and I, I totally agree with you on that as far as like, if it's not for you, it's not for you. If it wasn't made for you, then there's still a chance that you will get it, that the themes are universal enough for you to understand mm -hmm. and relate to. Or, you know, better yet, be exposed to this brand new world that you didn't even have consciousness of. Right. That's how we grow as people, right? You We're think that that's like the, be the beauty of music like that. Sure. That it exposes you to what... Yeah, and I, I feel like largely that is the case. The same yeah. thing with movies, same thing with... Uh, you know, TV shows and books and everything else, every other kind of media, right? That you have, it it, it is all about sharing your experience <coughs> or sharing an experience, sharing right. a view, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, one hundred percent, you can miss things if you aren't familiar with, you know, the people they're talking about, the place they're talking about, the culture they're talking about, the things they're talking about. It can be completely missed on you. Yeah, that's fair. But I feel like the response. Between Top Dog and Isaiah Rashad, and a oh, lot by, by the way, we've been saying Top Dog. It's not Top Dog. It's the CEO Punch. It's a different punch. guy. Different guy. Excuse me. So yes, Punch. People, people are gonna be like ah, Punch. Punch TD. Yeah, at I am still Punch. Yeah, different guy. Um, the uh, kind of what they've been sharing online, I I can't get funky to for the most part because it is so much about like he can't have an opinion on it because he hasn't lived those experiences and because it's not made for him. Mm -hmm. So therefore he can't share an opinion about it. I completely disagree. Yeah. Anyone can share an opinion about anything. Yeah. This show proves it. <laughs> yeah. That's for damn sure. So uh, like I, I categorically am against that, that, that thought process. Mm hmm. I understand where he's coming from. I understand where they're both coming from. And I understand why they'd be pissed off at, you know, him kind of panning it. Mm -hmm. um, Five out of ten, he and, panned it. No, and frankly, listening to his review, I don't think he gave it a fair shot. Yeah. Listening, like, <clears throat> having listened to the album and listening to his review, like, it just, it sounded like he was in a bad mood going into it. Yeah. And, like, was unfairly harsh about it. But, you know, whatever. I'll take it for face value. Maybe that's really how he feels about it. Totally fine. But then here's the thing. The other problem is if you are a fan of his and you, you kind of know his track record, you start to start you start to understand his taste in music. So then when you get an album like he gave that little peep or not little peep, uh no, he gave the little no, not the little peep album. He gave uh uh Ah, uh, who was that fucking rapper? Not Lil Peep. Uh, <laughs> Not six nine. God damn it! They all start to run together. Yeah. Um. Shit. He hasn't been around in a long time. 
he sided with Trump for some reason. Oh, yeah. You know uh, what I'm talking about? Lil Pimp. Lil Pimp. Lil Pimp. He gave that Lil Pimp album like a seven or an eight. There's <laughs> a little pump. Lil Pump. That's what it is. It's Lil Pump. Lil Pimp. I, I said Lil Man, Pimp. fuck him. No, wait, wait. <laughs> I need to explain. I said Lil Pimp, first of all, because it's funny, but because Trump called that's him Lil what, Pimp. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tr- even Trump didn't know his fucking name. Uh, Lil, Lil, Lil Pimp. Lil Pimp. Lil Pump. He gave that Lil Pump album a, a almost a glowing review. Yeah. And it's it's shit like that where you're like, dog, d- it, it just, it it does reek of like like hipster pretension Mm -hmm. when you give an album like that a glowing review and then when isaiah rashad comes out with something like this and you give it a five it's just like what are you doing yeah you know but then why does like kendrick care like cross over for him that's a good question it's a good question because that is a very black album yeah (laughs) so and yes i think that i think that the idea that it was it's too black for him and maybe it is maybe it is but i i think that it's less about its blackness and more that you know he fucking shitted on it and like you said it, it, he didn't really give it a fair shake and the other thing is if you look on metacritic the album has got like an 85 out of 100 so it's doing yeah. well with everybody else so it's mm-hmm. kind of like sometimes fantano is just like the fucking um Roger Ebert of <laughs> sure. good mo- good movies where it just gives it a thumbs down and you're like, what are you talking what about? What happened? <laughs> What'd you <laughs> eat today? Right. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It is interesting because that's what a lot of people always bring up is that, you know, he he gave The Life of Pablo a 10 out of 10. Or no, I'm sorry, not fucking Kanye's on the brain, but he gave Butterfly a 10 out of 10. I would like to know, I don't know, but I'd like to know what he gave Damn. I think he gave it a seven. Hmm. <clears throat> I sometimes, higher than that. sometimes I go back and forth. I honestly like to Peppa Butterfly is a masterpiece, but I, I enjoy damn more. I think some days. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. Oh, he yellow flannel. So it's got at least be an eight. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Seven, seven. Oh, he wore the yellow flannel with a seven. Interesting. Maybe that was before it became tradition, or maybe he was throwing people off with it because they knew, <laughs> they knew they were waiting for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. seven. Oh, so I was right, actually, from the jump. Yeah, seven out of ten. And you know, I would say that "Damn" is just as black as "To Pimp a Butterfly." Yeah, kinda. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I shouldn't say kinda. I mean more as like. I'm thinking of the sort of commercial appeal. Damn has more yeah, it does. on it. And and I think that that's that's it seems like that that seems to be Fantano's issue is that like the Isaiah Rashad album like the Sun's tirade the album before the house is burning mm-hmm. was a a more lyrical album a more personal album uh I think he I don't think he sings that much at all on that album. I see he does sing, but not like on this one. And on this one, you know, it's like it's a change of pace. It's a different direction. And it it's more commercialized. And it seems like that seems to be one of the sticking points for him is that like, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. The, and this this right here is the crux of the problem with criticizing criticism. Sure. It's a rabbit hole. (laughs) Because at the end of the day, you are saying, all we're saying is we disagree with this this guy's opinion. And that's all anybody else has ever said. And for him, for Fantano, all he's ever said is like, I'm just giving my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if he's listening to an album and like doesn't get it, that should inform more people to go, Oh, like he didn't get it. He's not he's not that he's not the person who this is for. He's not going to get it. Right. But I understand why Punch and Isaiah Rashad would be frustrated because they know that Fantano is such a tastemaker that he can affect the perception of that album. Yeah. And I think that at the end of the day, that's the real issue is capitalism. 
Sure. If he affects their sales by saying some bullshit, then they have to they have to chime in and be like, he got, guys, he didn't get it. Please listen to the album. Please buy the album. He is not. Don't listen to him. I think. I think. Sure. Uh, but the way they went about that just doesn't make them look very good, though. Well, what did Punch say that that uh, that is getting your goat? Um. Well, he, he said, "How do you prepare to listen to and critique black music? What's your routine?" Just curious because the black experience through music is pretty nuanced. Just wondering how you go about it. Uh-huh. Um, and so, let's see. He, uh, Fantano responded with, I've addressed these kinds of comments numerous times, but I'm tired of the combo being asymmetrical. If you're genuinely curious, let's go live tonight and talk about it. I'm following so you can DM me, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. So we'll do a Zoom. I'm assuming that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it. I would have watched that. Yeah, and then Punch said, uh, maybe. I'm not really pressed to go live, but a conversation live in person at some point might be interesting. And that was uh, that's probably it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to see that. I'd sure. like to see Fantano give, you know, his reasoning behind. But, like, the, the conversation to me is is so simple. It's what we've been saying here. It, it's just, look, you may be right. I may not know what I'm supposed to be getting out of this album, but my channel is about me expressing my opinion on the art that, you know, your artists and friends make. Yeah. Like, that's basically it. I mean, I, I don't know how much more we have to delve deeper into that. Yeah. It, it's I, an I, opinion. I think the fact, like, it would be different if Fantano uh, touted himself as some sort of authority. Sure. On anything. And he doesn't. And I think that that's the biggest difference. Yeah. If, uh, you know, you you look at Siskel and Ebert, for instance, they are touted as an authority on mu- on movies. Sure. And when they get something wrong, you can be like, fuck them. Mm-hmm. They, they don't know, you know. R.I.P. Respect. And it's the same thing with this. His channel grew organically. He yeah. has always been just a guy on the internet yeah. giving his opinion. A music enthusiast. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't proclaim, proclaim to be like a genius when it comes to composition or music theory yeah. or any of these other things. He literally is just a very popular guy. Yeah. Just some guy who got really, really popular. And listens to a lot of music. And that, at the end of the day, is, I think, the major problem Whenever these guys go after Fantano for not understanding the music, it's like, well, yeah, he might not sometimes. Sure. Because he's just a guy. Yeah. He's a YouTuber with a lot of pull. And you have to accept the fact that he grew his channel organically and he might be able to sway some people, but he might get it wrong. That's true. It is what it is. I mean, the, the meme of him giving... Dark Fantasy is six. Yeah, is is a warranted meme. He got yeah. it wrong. That's yep. a perfect album. He got it wrong. <laughs> he just got it wrong. Yeah, and you know his explanations for it don't hold any weight in my no. opinion. No, it doesn't make any sense. His re review was even worse. I'm like, he just got <laughs> yeah. it wrong. Yeah, but does that stop me from listening to Dark Fantasy? Absolutely no. not. Does it sway in any way how I feel about that album? Absolutely not. No. And the Isaiah Rashad album is the same thing. It's like, but again, to kind of go back to the beginning and to kind of wrap this up, the idea is they are concerned with people who are swayed by his opinion, not giving his album a fair shake because of how scathing that review is. And it's so scathing and they go, well, he didn't get it. It's complex, man. It's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a one and done black and white conversation. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I do I don't think that you need to be able to relate to everything to understand things, but I do think that you need to educate yourself on people's uh experiences and different cultures. Oh, uh, here's another example. I don't I don't I just didn't get reggaeton when mm-hmm. it was popular. I just sure. didn't get it. I didn't like it. It just sounded so repetitive to mm-hmm. me and I literally didn't get it because it was in Spanish, so right. I, I literally didn't get it. And uh, 
for years I would make fun of it and it just I I'd mock it and just I hate it. I just thought it was such a I don't I didn't understand why it had a stranglehold on Florida so much. Like mm-hmm. I, I know why, but like I didn't get it. And then years later now I am I'm really educating myself on the roots of those things, where all of that stuff comes from, the pioneers of this music. Yeah. And it like it changes your opinion on those things. Like I it's all I, because of Fast and Furious. You don't have to lie. <laughs> That's really what it is. It was, I mean, they had enough of it in it that I was like, maybe I was wrong. Don Omar and Tego. Maybe I was wrong. But no, I think educating yourself on a culture that you're not familiar with will inform your opinion on something. So if, if, if Fantano, uh, for instance, I don't know the level of education and appreciation he has for the black experience, but I do know that the more that you do of any culture will change how you experience the output of that culture. Sure. And so if he feels like that's a blind spot for him, it may inform his opinion on those on, on music that is based in that. And I think that there is merit to the argument that it will change his opinion, which is his and mm-hmm. his alone. It will change it. Yeah. If he's more educated on those things. Sure. Uh, my only rebuttal to that is listening to his review. A lot of his criticism was based on the performances. Yeah. Not on the substance, but on the performances. There was some commentary on him not really feeling this, you know, the the message behind a song because the performance is so, like, slow and, and, and kind of lifeless. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if the criticism is like he just didn't like the singing, it's like, okay, man, that has nothing to do with you being black. <laughs> and that's <laughs> just kind didn't of like the singing. That's kind of a lot of it. And honestly, if I were anyone in TDE involved in this, my advice would to have been turn the other cheek and pay attention to everyone else who loved the album. Yeah. And just make it about if anyone asks you about it, just go, eh, it's one guy with an opinion. Yeah. You know, who cares? I think that's the way to handle any of this shit. Move on. The more water you put into that boat, the more it's like, oh, well, now what are, you, what are you complaining that it's sinking now? It became a huge thing. Yeah. It became a huge thing. You and brought this on yourselves. Now, yeah. uh, now this album is in part going to be associated with fucking Anthony Fantano, <laughs> right. and it's because you guys did that, and that it stole a lot <laughs> of the spotlight away from the album. Yeah, which is good. It's a good listen to the album. It's a good album. It's a good album. I like it. I do think King's Disease 2 is a far better album. Bro. Uh, Speaking of I can't of believe albums. that he came out with that. And, and like, it's better than King's Disease 1. Yeah. It's one of my favorite al- albums of the year so far. Yeah. I was so surprised re- at how good, really good it was. <laughs> it's really good. I was I, I was amazed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Nas is Nas is in my top five. I mean, for everything that he's done for hip hop, all of his stuff, I, I I would put Nas in my top five. But there is some shit that he. Uh, yeah, we, we all know that there's the some stories. misses. Yeah, we we know the we know the story of Nas. Yeah, and he just comes out with and I was, I was worried about King's Disease too for two reasons. Number one, it's a calling it King's Disease. Yes, and that's always like, yeah. don't do that. No. And then the other thing was how boring the cover art is. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, no, he's just putting a, a collection of songs out. Yeah. It's going to be like a fucking DJ Khaled album. It looks like a mixtape or yeah. like a Grace Hits. Yeah. It's, it's I, I still don't, uh, even given how good well, the album is. And I compared don't like to that King's cover. Z's 1's cover. Yeah. That, that cover's awesome. It's like intricate and cool. Yeah. It's like a piece of art you put on the wall. And yeah. Then the second was just a picture of Nas. I'm a like, profile. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. come on, man. All right. For real? That's what we're doing? Yeah. So those two things worried me. I was like, oh, no, surprise album. It's a sequel. It doesn't look that interesting. The features, I'm like, I like the EPMD. Ooh, Miss Lauren Hill. Okay, not, I mean, uh, Eminem. Ugh, okay, mm-hmm. guess we'll have to deal with that. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's yeah. talk about that Eminem feature. <laughs> okay. You want to crack open another yep. one so we can get into that? Yeah, Eminem I'm going to do that right now, brother. <laughs> crack open another, brother. Ooh, yeah. That Eminem feature, dude. EBMD, we're back to business. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Nas has the original EPMD song on the first album, on the first King's Disease, and then he does EPMD 2, and he has actual 
EPMD, EPMD. Yeah. Eric Sermon, Robert Parrish on the album. You're like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. When I saw that it was featuring EPMD and Eminem, I was like, oh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I heard the song, I was like, oh, what? Mm-hmm. Nas's verse is great. EPMD's verse is great. They're going back and forth. They're trading like every two bars where you're like, man, the chemistry. When two rappers can trade like one or two bars, you're just like, these guys fucking know each other like the back of their hands. Yeah. It's amazing. And then fucking Eminem comes at the end and does what he's been doing for the past like three years, which is just dad jokes. rap super fast, bunch of dad jokes. And then he goes on for far too long. About Santa Claus and the and, reindeer. And everyone's just like, well, did you hear that Eminem verse? I heard it. I didn't like it. Yeah. I'm done with this fucking guy. Man. There's, I'm done with him. And that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. He, I don't know what he could do to make me enjoy his music again. I don't know if it's possible. It, a drastic stylistic change. And uh, but that's the thing. Like I, I am, I'm taking the onus on that. I, I'm saying I'm the one defective here. Eminem, he does nothing for me. Yeah. Only negative. Only negative for the past since the Eminem show, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a very it's, long it's like time. 2004. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I'm saying, I am saying that I'm the problem here. I want every Eminem fan to know it's not necessarily his performance, though I think it is, <laughs> but not necessarily. I'm saying I've changed. Mm-hmm. I've changed. And I don't know if I am capable of enjoying Eminem anymore. I would counter that by saying that Eminem has definitely changed. And the things that we enjoyed about him, contrary to what people believe, he has not always rapped like this. You will hear people say he hasn't changed his style that much, or he's always done this, or he's always said blah, blah, blah. He has not. Yeah. I implore you to go back and listen to Slim Shady, uh, Marshall Mathers, and Eminem show, and then listen to what he's done in the past three years. And come back to me and say he's he's the same rapper. Fuck you. Yeah. How about that? No way. But I wonder what is it? You know, like wh- what what is that? That je ne sais quoi that has made Eminem such a cringe factory. It's it's the it's the reliance on the fact that like all he has to do is rap fast. Here's the thing: when it comes to this is this is part of the reason why I don't. I'm not a big metaphor rapper because they fall flat a lot of the time Mm -hmm. unless they're like really clever. It's hard. It's harder than people think. I'll I'll shoot you and like a metaphor, you'll fall flat. (laughs) Boom. Maybe it's easier than I thought, actually. Didn't really think about it. Or is that that a simile? Yeah, that is a simile. That's not a metaphor. That's a simile. Yeah. Mm. Similes and metaphors, which is what a lot of rappers, actually a lot of rappers get that, a lot of people, a lot of consumers get that confused. We're like, ah, it's a metaphor. It's actually, it's, he's, the verse is full <laughs> of similes. But anyway, we're splitting hairs. Right. Doing that kind of rap is harder to maintain than people realize. When you go back and you listen to the Fabulouses, mm-hmm. the Lloyd Bankses, the, the Jewel Santanas. Sure. Where you're like, at the time, the Cassidy's, their entire, the the entire idea of these guys was that, was that they were punchline rappers. Right. And that's what made them great. When you go back and listen to it now, you're like, those punchlines, they were, they were okay. They weren't as clever as I thought when I was. And when you listen to those guys now, you're like, well, those goos really, really cannot think of a good simile to save their lives at this point. Yeah, and I I feel like it is it's one of those finite things. Like, yes, it's very finite. You you can only get so far just doing the simile metaphor game, and it, it, they don't like you're saying they don't age well. No, and, and it it's one of those it's one of those tricks that once it's revealed that you have the prestige, mm-hmm. and then it's over. It's like you know you know that's happening. You know what that that line is. Right. Once you've heard it once, it's like the magic's gone. Exactly. So it's fine in like a freestyle, but if that's your entire like persona and that's your entire, you know, vibe behind the mic, it's I don't think it's enough. It's not enough. And I think that's also why a lot I mean, other than just not 
having the chops to be a songwriter. That's why a lot of, you know, like the gins of the world, yeah, gin. um, like ultimately fall flat as, as artists uh, outside of, you know, the ciphers. Yeah. Cause it's like, okay, well that's, if that's all you got and you can't like make a coherent, you know, story or, you know, uh, come up with something catchy to go along or something visually interesting with your lyrics. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not <laughs> enough just to say like this thing is like that. Absolutely. And I think that that is the trapping that Eminem has fallen into these past couple of years where he's leaned into the idea that he's that that other people have called him the greatest rapper of all time. He's leaned into that and he's like, I mean, it seems like what happened was. He had that verse on that Drake song forever. He rapped really fast. And there they go. I've been shady and go to nuts. They go macadamia and go ballistic bow. He can make them look like bobos and bing 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 bow. And uh, people lost their fucking minds over that verse. We, you just made us lose monetization. <laughs> I want you to know that. <laughs> and uh, honestly, go back and listen to that verse. It's starting there. He says. He says they're. They're going nuts, macadamia, macadamians, they go, or nuts, they go, macadamia, and they go, ballistic, whoa. They, he rhymes, whoa. Okay. That's lazy. I'm yeah. telling you from a songwriter standpoint, sure. to use whoa or any kind of like word that's not really a word yeah. to make sure that that bar still rhymes is lazy. Yeah. And I've done it before because I get lazy, and I've regretted it. Every time I go back and listen to it, I'm like, I should have just... Found thought of something more clever <laughs> yeah so i think it started from then mm-hmm. at that point he was like that's all i have to do all right and that's all he's let's done go baby since then so yeah i'm saying it he kind of ruined that epmd so yeah. i was happy to have just nas and epmd on it and the inclusion of eminem it was i i allowed it for uh the three-fourths that were good on yeah. that song. <clears throat> I'll just say that once Eminem sh- Eminem starts rapping, I just go to the next track. I really do. It's easy enough, yeah. Easy enough. It's good that he's at the end of the song. Yeah. Agreed. I don't have to sit through it and then get EPMD. Yeah. Uh so yeah, King's Disease great album. Yes. We could we could have just cheers to that. That would have been good enough, you know. <laughs> you want to? We could make that our cheers. <laughs> <laughs> We no, it. I want to talk about the Hall and okay, stuff. Fine. Well, fine. it's an hour fifteen. Should we? What are you feeling? Let's wrap it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's wrap it up. Let's cheers and let's get out of here. Okay. Deal. All right. It's your bit. Let's do oh, it. Oh, thank you. So my <laughs> cheers of the week is for a little game called Super Metroid. Cheers, me. Cheers. So, uh, Super Metroid. Obviously, a very old game, one that I uh, for the Super Nintendo. I had played it a little bit in the past, but never really like sat down and played it. Played it, uh, but with the new Metroid game coming out this year, which I have pre-ordered because it looked that cool, mm-hmm. I decided to go back because it's part of the uh, Nintendo Switch Virtual Console uh, collection. Oh, it is. It is nice. And so I've been playing that, uh, and actually I got also inspired to play that because I was playing uh, Guacamelee 2, which mm-hmm. is a Metroidvania game. Yeah. So I was like, let me see how this used to feel. Yeah. And going back, like I, I'm using a guide as a crutch, but I'm doing that. Wow. Okay, listen. <laughs> the way I'm doing it, the way I'm doing it is I will go and I will explore an area for a while, and then I'll go, okay, if I need help, I'll pop into the guide because I'm old and I don't have all the time in the world. Yeah. I mean, guides are underrated. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's not cheating. It's fine. I'll, you know, I'll, I will stand up for anyone using guides. Yeah. I use a guide for kingdom hearts and Pokemon. It's fine. It's fine. I don't care. It's yeah. fine. Um, we're not gatekeepers here. Okay. Oh no, no, okay. no. Well, especially when it comes to video games, that's the last thing we are. No, no. There's only so much time in your day. I'm also reading Dune, people. Hey, I'm reading Dune. Yeah, that's a that's it's a, a thick book. book. That is a thick book. I'm trying boy. to finish it by the time the movie comes out in what October, November. Yeah. It's coming soon. October, October. 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 Oh, God. Yeah, it's right um, around the corner, buddy. 
Yeah, so it's a lot. So I have a lot of things and a lot of other like modern games that I'm also juggling too. You already said it. We're not gatekeepers when it comes to video games, man. However you want to enjoy the fucking game, enjoy it. Yes. So my point to bring this up is even though it's an old ass game, it holds up. That's what's up. Um, the feeling of uh, upgrading <clears throat> and getting the thing to unlock the thing that you couldn't get to the last time. It, it it like it is universal. Like it, that's a timeless, it's super satisfying. It's a timeless mechanic. It feels so good. Yeah, so good. And it's it's um, I think like highly underrated how much of a like precursor to survival horror games that game is. Yeah, it, like it is. It, it's like a it's an alien game. Like it it is very like quiet in times and like eerie and like you feel very isolated in it. And yeah. the fact that they're able to give you that much of a uh, ambiance and 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 kind of just overall like suspense within a game that is on the Super Nintendo is really impressive to me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to encourage people who maybe missed it back in the day or were too young to play it when it came out. Go back, check it out. It takes a second for you, your hands to kind of get you know used to the controls and stuff because it's it is an old game mm. old game is old old game is old but it's a lot of fun and <clears throat> i haven't beaten it yet but i'm pretty close so i'm gonna i'm going to see that game through and be ready for metroid dread yeah when it comes out in november i think you got a you got a uh, stacked slate i do your schedule's all filled up i do i have a lot of entertainment <laughs> Uh, that's wonderful. I, that makes me, I, I mean, I have a switch and I have all the resources. That makes me want to, it makes me want to jump in. Just play it. I am. It's a good time. I am. Yeah. All right. My cheers <coughs> goes to the early career of Hall and Oates. You're here. Cheers. <laughs> Hall and oh. Oates are synonymous with, uh, 80s uh just 80s music sure they're they they be they became the blockbuster yacht rock group of the 80s you say yacht rock i think hall notes exactly and for good reason their biggest songs are from like 81 to 86 and they're perfect i'll fight you over hall and notes <laughs> They're perfect songs, but their mid to late '70s stuff. Oh, interesting! Is something to bolt. I've never gone that deep. Adam, Obesius Rodriguez. Oh my goodness! I am telling you, their first like their first album, Whole Oats, is a good. It's like a you know, it's a decent Blue Eyed Soul album. Mm. Their second album, Abandoned Luncheonette. First of all, that. Title. How'd you know my password? <laughs> <laughs> Who names an album that Abandoned where you're like you, you you like your association with them is the is a band that would either do self titled albums mm -hmm. or name songs after singles sure. because that's how you sell things in the eighties, right. right? Very singles driven. But no, they were doing super weird, super experimental, like. It, it it reminds me of it's like Bee Gees. I, I was that's a, yes. Yeah. It rem, people's perception of the Bee Gees is obviously their disco stuff because it's incredible. But their early career stuff is super weird, mm -hmm. out there, kind of like this isn't the same band. Yeah. And Hall and Oates like first four albums, you're like, who the fuck are these guys? Like Daryl Hall has an iconic voice, so it cuts through whatever genre he's singing in. Yeah. But. Uh, the album after Abandoned Luncheonette is called War Babies, and it's basically a prog rock album. Oh, my God. It's super experimental and strange, and you're like, who are these fucking guys? Yeah. Their first couple of albums are so good and rarely talked about in a way that now that I've discovered them is upsetting to me. They had a full-on 15-year career of just dropping 
bangers. Hmm. They've got some fucking smut in the middle. Sure, of course. There's not. There is definitely some like. Ugh, this is what like. There's some stuff where they were like. Some field they leaned into the adult contemporary stuff, or either they leaned into the blue eyed soul stuff, where it's just kind of boring, and they're mm-hmm. just trying to do like Motown shit. And it's like you guys, like you know, lean into your strengths. So they they definitely don't have a perfect career. Sure. But there is some stuff there, man. Some hidden gems. Oh, buddy, okay. there are some hidden gems in that early those '70s albums. I was right. pleasantly surprised at how good some of them are. I'm so have to check that out, please do on Spotify. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. All that shit's up there. So very good. All right. <clears throat> um, I think uh, there was even more shit that we needed to get that we couldn't get to, but uh, it's okay. Um, next week we'll talk about this bandana. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> because uh, I got this in the mail. From okay, Bonnaroo, and uh, well, we'll just talk about okay. It <laughs> <laughs> that's a preview for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Next week, more next Bonnaroo week. talk. More Bon. Hey, man, that's got some of our best engagement. We should turn this into a fucking Bonnaroo, Bonnaroo podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the one ruin, one ruin. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, what do you think? We got to review these, right? We got to review these. these. Well, before we get out of here, we got to review these brewskis. So, Adam, please, what'd you think of the tiki sour? It, it was it was good. It was very good, and I think it it mm. it did. <laughs> I don't like the way you're like. Hey, you, you, well, here's it's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. I liked it more the more I drank it. Yeah, which is you know par for the course yeah. <laughs> for, for anything definitely really. um uh, but when i first tasted it that cinnamon was a little overpowering mm, for me okay it it, it kind of hit me over the head in a way that i didn't enjoy um now it, it like you know now i've had a bit more of it it's kind of settled to the back a bit more mm-hmm. um and i like i like the flavors i'm getting uh i i think it does evoke a painkiller <laughs> The, the cocktail and um, you know <clears throat> I'm just at a crossroads here because I enjoy it I, I enjoy it and I respect it for what it does but would I get it again m- only a maybe mm. so for that reason I'm going to give it a four but if you are in any way like really into either painkiller tiki drinks or into sours and want to try something a little different highly recommend it for you okay i like it i think it's good i think they did everything that they wanted to it's just not quite for me i think the cinnamon kind of threw me off uh, a little bit Mm -hmm. so so in the vein of a fantana review it's a strong four (laughs) yes (laughs) i would probably give it a four and a half and i'll tell you why Uh, because uh I actually did quite enjoy it, and I think that uh, vice beers give you a lot of wiggle room. There's a lot of freedom with a vice. Good palate. Um, yeah, and I mean, beer people can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I mean, you can do uh, a hefe hefeweizen vice beer where it's like just a you know kind of a, a coriander citrusy notes of like you know, a, a German Hefeweizen, or you can do something in the vein of this, which is like, you know, super fruity, super kind of experimental and weird with it. Yeah. Kind of opens it up to do a lot. I think that we've always talked about beers doing what they intend to do. Mm-hmm. And this checks that mark twice. For sure. So I think that, as it is advertised, it is. So if you're into that, you will really enjoy this. If you're just kind of going outside of the of 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 your uh, favorite beers and you're just trying to experiment and kind of see, eh, you might you might not dig this because yeah, the cinnamon is 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 pretty strong. Um, that pineapple comes through right on the nose immediately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but if a painkiller style vice is um alluring to you uh, I think you'll enjoy this so agreed I gave it four and a half all right 
You think we got it? I know we got it. Well, if you say we got it, then it's over. This has been the One Baron Podcast. For myself, Marco Dupa. For Adam Obesius Rodriguez. You know it's just our opinion. Thank you guys for listening. Drink delicious beer. And have a beautiful week. We love you.